Joe Lombardi is the offensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos. Can he help the Broncos hoist the Lombardi Trophy at the end of the season? You'll get that and much more on the Broncos coaching hires on today's special episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Could Joe Lombardi help the Broncos and Sean Payton hoist the Lombardi Trophy at the end of the 2023 season? Welcome into a brand new episode, Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Just want to say thank you to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day, every single day, free and available everywhere you get your podcast in audio format, or whether you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor, hit that subscribe or that follow follow button down below so you never miss out on a day's worth of Broncos news content coverage and more. I'm your host as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. And over the weekend on Saturday, Sean Payton and the Broncos officially announced a majority of their coaching staff for the 2023 NFL season. A large portion of the coaches we already know, we've already discussed here on the podcast, but there's some new names and new rules that have been assigned that we will break down. And let's start things off here, the offensive side of the ball. Let's talk about Joe Lombardi. Now, several days ago, it was announced that he would be joining Sean Payton's staff, but it was unclear to any of us or anybody in Broncos country what his official role would be. Now we know that on Saturday it was announced he will be the team's offensive coordinator this upcoming season. And look, the Broncos offense needs a revamp. They need rehauled entirely this upcoming season. And more recently, Lombardi spent the last two seasons as a member of the Los Angeles Chargers coaching staff as their offensive coordinator working with Justin Herbert. And there were a lot of times before the Broncos filled their head coaching spot with uh, Sean Payton that if the Los Angeles Chargers were to fire Brennan Staley, the connection was there that Joe Lombardi would probably stay on there in LA and Sean Payton would come in to be the head coach. It's kind of similar to that, but now it's in Denver. It's not in Los Angeles. So for me, I think a lot of people in Broncos country are looking at this move and they're immediately skeptical. Some people are like, hey, I, I like this. They see certain things that everyone's not caught up in the recency bias of things. Joe Lombardi is a very well-respected coach. And obviously we know he's the grandson of legendary coach Vince Lombardi. It's why I had to make the analogy. Could he help the Broncos hoist the Lombardi trophy at the end of the season? I mean, how ideal and poetic would that be? There's a lot that Denver has to accomplish before they ever get to that. But let's continue on here. I think the thing that stands out about Joe Lombardi being hired by Sean Payton is the fact that he's super familiar with him. Previously, throughout Sean Payton's coaching career, throughout Joe Lombardi's coaching career, Sean Payton and he have spent 12 years together in New Orleans, and he was also the offense coordinator under Sean Payton in New Orleans. Now, we all know this. Sean Payton will be calling the plays for the Broncos offense this upcoming season, helping guide Russell Wilson, hopefully, to better production, better performance this upcoming year. Lombardi is a guy that makes sense. And, and you know, a lot of people, like I said, are, are getting caught up on, oh, he's the OC. And they're looking at the Chargers. And the thing that I'm seeing on Twitter, some of the comments I've gotten, especially on YouTube as well, you go to any Chargers podcast, you want to check out the Lockdown Chargers podcast, you look at their feeds and they're like, oh, Joe Lombardi's to blame. I don't understand that when they're putting up a ton of points this season and you had the situation in the playoffs where they have a massive lead at halftime. And then the second half, they blow it. Okay, the defense played really well. The offense scored points to get them possession and, and obviously get a big lead against the Jacksonville Jaguars. In the second half, the defense couldn't stop anybody. So to me, feels a little bit more like Joe Lombardi was a little bit of a scapegoat for Brandon Staley in Los Angeles. Well, now he gets the opportunity to say, hey, these are what these guys like to do in L.A., and it gives the Broncos some inside intel on maybe how to attack some of the weaknesses that the Chargers have. Though, the Broncos did beat the Chargers in the Week 18 regular season finale to close things off to set up the week before for their loss to the Jacksonville Jaguars. So, you know, I, I think that a lot of people have to wait and see, right? And same thing with the Vance Joseph Hires defensive coordinator. There is a reason Sean Payton made this move. I may not understand it. Sarah may not understand it. You may not understand it. But I'm, I'm 
think we'll find out, right? We're fixing to find out, as Gary Kubiak normally says, there will more than likely be a press conference that introduces the coordinators, and we'll ask a little bit deeper into that. But we have to see the on-field results before we can judge these hires specifically, including Sean Payton. And that's the one thing I do ask of Broncos country. It's going to require all of us, us in the media, you as fans, it's going to require us all to you know, be patient and have a level-headed approach to this entire upcoming season where the expectations, you know, they're a little bit higher than they were last year because last year they were at the top. They fell off because of how bad they performed. And now it's just about getting back to solid ground, which I think Denver can get there. Joe Lombardi is going to be an important piece to that for the Broncos this upcoming season. But there's some other coaching moves that Sean Payton made that I do think will provide value to Denver. And I think when you look at Payton's coaching staff right now, there's a diverse background of, of guys who have a lot of experience, some former experience as players. You have a, you know, a coaching staff that has guys who've been coaching for over 10 years, some guys over 40 years in the NFL. I don't think you can overlook that because of the fact that, oh, this seems like a questionable decision. Like I said, we have to let it all play out. But Paul Kelly is the assistant to the head coach, not the assistant head coach. That is Mike Westhoff. But he is the assistant to the head coach, a role that he had when he was a member of the Washington Commanders back when Mike Shanahan was coaching there. And since then, he's kind of elevated. He's been in an executive role with that team for the last 11 seasons. He is now coming over with the Denver Broncos, with Sean Payton to be the assistant to the head coach. It'll be interesting to find out what that job actually entails going forward, especially with some of the other coaches that the Broncos have brought on to staff. Now, I will mention this as well. Peyton has brought on some guys that he has familiarity with. And the next one is his passing game coordinator on the offensive side of the ball. It's going to be John Morton. And he coached with Sean Peyton in 2015 and 2016 as an offensive assistant with the New Orleans Saints. And in 2022, Morton was a senior offensive assistant with Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions, which their offense is one of the highest scoring offenses in the NFL. You look at some of these moves and you can say, okay, Sean Payton is not wasting any time trying to build the staff that can help the Broncos offense not only be good, but put up points. And that is the goal. That's what these moves and these hirings are simply to do. Just that. And we have to wait for the process to play out. We have to wait for the regular season to get here. We can't base too much off of what we see in training camp or even the preseason for that matter because those are deceptive. The sample sizes are skewed and what you're actually able to report on is very, very minimal. So once the regular season comes and everybody gets their eyes on the Broncos offense, we will see if they take gradual steps forward this upcoming season. Now, on this bonus episode of Lockdown Broncos, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue talking about some of the coaching hires. Are there any surprises? And why are the Broncos taking an unorthodox approach with some positions on their coaching staff? You'll get that on today's bonus episode, Lockdown Broncos. This episode of the show is brought to you by our good friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. And the midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook sportsbook app it's safe it's secure and it's super easy to use and then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores to threes drained in a game and plus FanDuel even lets you combine your bets all in one for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay so don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on that's FanDuel.com slash locked on make every moment more with FanDuel an official sports betting partner of the NBA are there any surprises about the Broncos coaching staff that has been assembled by Sean Payton? Thank you so much, Broncos Country, for tuning in to this bonus, shorter episode of Lockdown Broncos on your favorite audio podcasting platforms or whether you watch on YouTube. We appreciate you so much. Sarah Bettinger and I will be back with a full course for you as well on Monday through Friday on your favorite audio podcasting platforms. You want to watch or get the show early, you always get it Sunday through Thursday on YouTube as well. That's a little bit of a cheat code for those of you that didn't know that quite yet, but we appreciate you so much for tuning in and rocking with us every single day. We just talked about the offensive coaching staff, Joe Lombardi as offensive coordinator for Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos working with Russell Wilson and helping build this offense to be better than what it was last year. And I think that when we look at how it was last year, we've always asked ourselves this question and I've kind of refrained towards the end of the year from using it because somehow it always got proven to be true. It can't get any worse, right? Let's hope that's not the case. 
in 2023 with some of these moves that Sean Payton and the Broncos have done. And hopefully Russell Wilson is playing at a high level here once again. But are there any surprises about some of these hires that we've seen from Sean Payton? I think there are a couple, right? And I'm going to mention the fact that there are two instances on Sean Payton's current coaching staff where you have guys who were players in 2022 for an NFL team that are now jumping into coaching and they're going to have pretty pivotal roles. Let's talk about Davis Webb, a guy who was drafted by the New York Giants in 2017, had some previous stints with the Cleveland Browns, the New York Jets, the Buffalo Bills, and then last year got his first ever career start as a member of the New York Giants. He's been regarded for the last three to four seasons, from what I can recall, a very, very smart-minded quarterback. You know, maybe he didn't have the physical assets to ever uproot anybody in terms of the quarterback lineup that they had in New York, but he's been considered as a guy who's probably going to take the jump to coaching. And a similar guy I can throw out there and mention is Brett Rippon is also viewed in the same category that Davis Webb has been. He will now be the quarterback coach for the Broncos in 2023, which is certainly interesting considering he's 28 years old. He's just a few months younger than I am, which is very surprising, right? It's like, hey, could I be a position coach in the NFL one day? I don't know if I have the aspirations of doing just that. But for Davis Webb, he's got a very important job. And then there's another guy as well that's coming on staff, Chris Banjo, who spent some seasons with the Arizona Cardinals more recently. He's a defensive back. He was a key special teams player down there in Arizona. He's joining the Broncos coaching staff under Ben Kotwika, the special teams coordinator, as the assistant special teams coordinator here in Denver, a guy who's played a ton of special teams here in the National Football League. I think it's valuable to have that experience. And even for Davis Webb coaching quarterbacks, I think it's crucial to have guys who have played and have played more recently. You get a different insight. And the way that these guys prepare for games as well as players, it's unique to what you see in the NFL, right? It's why when so many players' careers are over, they tend to get into coaching because they miss it, but they also have that experience. They have that expertise that can help them make the transition. I also think what the Broncos currently have right now with their coaching staff, when we talk about senior personnel, you talk about Sean Payton, who's got so much experience as a head coach in the National Football League. You add Mike Westhoff as the assistant head coach for the Broncos in this specific situation. is going to oversee some of the special team stuff, but he's going to be working with Ben Kotwika, who has experience himself. You're not just putting these guys on an island and saying, okay, hey, go do it. Go coach quarterbacks. Go be the assistant special teams guy. You're combining their playing experience and their expertise in that field, but you're also combining it with mentorship from experienced coaches like the Sean Paytons, the Mike Westhoffs of the world. I think that is valuable. And for a guy like Davis Webb, you get to work with a guy like Russell Wilson, who throughout his entire career has been a perennial All-Pro and it was on a Hall of Fame trajectory this past year was Russell Wilson's worst year of his career, right? But you can't just throw everything that Russ has done out of the window because of that. This is a good experience for the Broncos. It's a good experience for these young coaches that are getting valuable, hands-on experience in the National Football League. I think for some people, they look and they're like, this is so unorthodox. I don't understand why Sean Payton is doing this. I look at it and say it's outside of the box thinking. And this is, I think, what the NFL is, is going to eventually evolve into. You're going to see more players coming straight off the field into coaching gigs. We've seen it pay off. And I think it depends on, can you fast track that, right? Can you can you gain valuable experience, learn more about yourself, not only just as a former player, but as a coach, and how can you transcend that information, that knowledge that you have and that you're still learning from other coaches who've been doing it forever to help you grow? I like that. I think it's important, and the Broncos are embracing that in this coaching staff, and I think it's something that has to be applauded. Now, another surprise I think we'll touch on here in today's bonus episode, Lockdown Broncos, there has been no running back coach announcement as of yet as the time we're sitting down and recording this. The initial hires were put out on the Denver Broncos team website. It was announced there first. No local or national reporter reported it first, which is crazy. So as we're seeing, more information is now coming out from the team exclusively in situations like this. So the coaching staff is assembled, minus running back, minus assistant defensive back, minus assistant offensive line. Some of those coaching uh, hirings, are expected to be announced next week at some positions as well. So keep an eye on that. But then I think the final thing we'll close on today's episode of the show, Lockdown Broncos, a bonus episode for all of you in Broncos country. Why Joe Lombardi? I think experience is necessary. I think you have familiarity with guys that you trust, like I mentioned earlier with Sean Payton and him. I just want to go back and reiterate, Broncos country 
you have to trust what Sean Payton is doing, right? And it's almost like a trust fall exercise. Okay, I'm going to stand on top of this ladder. I'm going to fall back and I'm going to hope that you're going to catch me. Broncos fans are the ones who are standing on that ladder with their arms stretched out wide, closing their eyes and falling back and hoping that somebody catches them. I understand skepticism about some of these coaching hires. And look, some may be good on paper. Some may be bad on paper. How many times have we all, just generally speaking throughout our history of consuming football, looked at things on paper? before they've ever played out and said, okay, it's going to go this way. 2022 is a prime example of how we looked at everything on paper and said, this is it. The Broncos are going to be back in Super Bowl contention. It didn't work out, but we put trust in that, right? And I know when you put trust in something and it comes back and it bites you and it burns you, it's hard to put trust in it. But you have to because this is an entirely new regime. Sean Payton, a very experienced coach, in my opinion, Broncos country, deserves the benefit of the doubt until proven otherwise. We have to see what these hires do. Does it lead to immediate on-field success? I don't have that as the expectation, right? But you want to see growth. And I think if the Broncos come out and they're better than they were last year in various areas, you can build to that. It's not going to be a flip, of, you know, snap of the finger, a flip of the switch, and all of a sudden everything is fixed and everything is rolling. It doesn't work that way in football. There's so many moving pieces. But this is where I think you have to give Sean Payton the benefit of the doubt. Trust until you see otherwise. And there's a reason he made these hires. There's a reason that these guys stood out to him in the interview process. All we can do is sit back and look at free agency, which is coming up, and analyze what personnel could Denver bring back? Who could they sign a free agency? What are they going to do in the NFL draft with no first or second round pick? These are the important things that we have to ask the questions about regarding this current staff going forward. So with that said, Broncos country, that'll wrap up today's episode. Locked on Broncos on your favorite audio podcasting platform or whether you are watching on YouTube. We appreciate you so much, Sir Bettinger and myself. We love breaking down everything that has to do with this team every single day for all of you in Broncos country. Speaking of that, we will be back tomorrow for a brand new episode of the show. And we're going to look at Vance Joseph with the hire of him as defensive coordinator. How might it change the Broncos plans in free agency with their current personnel, guys who are set to become free agents? Could any Arizona Cardinals defensive players follow VJ over to Denver? You'll get that on tomorrow's episode, Locked on Broncos.